So you've been working on your game for weeks, months, maybe even years, really trying to bring something to life that you care about. But even though you've been working on it for a really long time, how do you know it's actually good? How do you know people will actually want to play your game? When you're in the weeds of building, it can be really easy to get caught up in the little details and lose sight of that bigger picture. Especially if you're a solo game developer, you definitely have blind spots and getting feedback from other people can be a really great tool to help you fill in those gaps. But how do you go about getting the feedback? Over the years, I've learned a few techniques the hard way on how to actually get good feedback from people. These ideas really helped us make our games more fun and interesting. So whether you're ready now to send demos of your game to people, or you're just getting started with your game and you're starting to plan out that feedback strategy, I'm stoked to share these things with you today. The first tactic is to make it quick and easy for people to jot ideas down as they're playing your game. Put a feedback form directly in your game. We put this form in Danger Crew's pause menu and it really changed the game for us, so to speak. Players could pause the game, type whatever they want into this text box, it wrote a message to a web server, and we were able to look at all the messages and find patterns in what everybody was saying. We also told people about this feature really early in the game so people would know to use it as they played. There's a character with my sprite in it who would tell you about the form in the very first chapter. It also kind of broke the fourth wall in a fun way, reminding people that this game was built by humans on the other side, humans that want to hear from you. One really helpful detail is that this form also recorded the area of the game that the player was in as they recorded the message. That gave us a lot of context on where exactly the player was in the game, so if they were feeling lost or frustrated, we knew exactly which part of the game they were talking about. I learned this trick from a GDC talk, by the way. A UX researcher on the first Destiny game shared that feedback from focus group testers would get pinged directly to the team's internal editing tools. This helped the level designers know exactly which areas of the game were problematic. Internal editing tools are near and dear to my heart. I made a whole video about them just a few weeks ago. I'll link a card to that up here. One thing we got wrong though was not including an optional contact info field. I often had follow-up questions, but no way to actually reach out to these people to ask them those questions. Plus it would have been nice just to say, thanks, thanks for the feedback. The next tactic is all about invisibly gathering feedback through analytics, your game automatically taking notes of player progress as they happen. People often say one thing, but actually do another. And sometimes the raw facts about their behavior are the bits of information you need to really help you design something. If you work on websites, you might be familiar with tools like Google Analytics that track page hits and activity. Consider adding something like this to your game. We had a little battle tracker in Danger Crew that helped us know which battles people were consistently winning and losing. Streaks of green here mark battles that players won, while red means they lost. You could have analytics under the hood of your game that track player progression and when levels are completed. These events could tell you if people are actually discovering little things that you've put in the game, or maybe what order they're playing your levels in, if it's like that kind of open game. Tooling wise, if you're building a web-based game, you could probably just use something like already built, like Google Analytics. If you're using a more traditional game engine, you may need to roll something on your own, but it really just needs to ping information to a web server. Quick note though, never ever track information that could actually identify a person unless you've asked for permission. So the next tactic is probably my favorite one. It's one I accidentally discovered while we were trying to market Danger Crew, but I wish I would have known about it way earlier. You need to actually watch people play your game. And that might sound obvious or strange, but let me explain. So we were done with the game and we had just released it. We wanted to reach out to streamers to help spread awareness of the game, have people play the game in front of their audience, more people would know about it. It's just one of those marketing things you gotta do when you're starting to promote your game. So I started browsing Twitch, looking for streamers that were playing games similar to ours. Our game of course looks like Pokemon, and so I started there, quickly discovered that Pokemon streamers are really loyal to Pokemon the brand and Pokemon the thing, not really the genre of game of Pokemon Red or Blue like we were channeling. So I shifted to other games that inspired our game, like Earthbound and Super Mario RPG for SNES, which is like my favorite game ever. So I reached out to some of these streamers with our Steam page and kind of our game pitch, asked if they'd be interested in checking the game out. A few of them were, so I sent out Steam keys and they started streaming. This experience kind of reminded me of something that my UX design friends have talked about, a technique called the hallway test. That's when you have a prototype of a new design, say it's like a mobile app, and you stop someone at the hallway, say like at work, in the office, and you hand them the phone and you say, hey, can you complete this task? And then you can ask them follow-up questions afterwards. Those are really useful tests, but there's one kind of elephant in the room, and that's that they're super awkward. 
you're hovering over someone's shoulder while they're using your creative work and they're kind of uncomfortable because you're like hovering over their shoulder and it's your creative work. So they may be afraid to like hurt your feelings in the moment. It's a really good start for getting feedback, but the flaw is that these people usually aren't in their own space or comfort zone when they're actually like playing the game or using the app. Streamers though are a totally different story because they're in their own space, using their own computer, often hanging out with friends as they're playing the game that they're streaming. So we watched a handful of these streamers play the game and immediately noticed where people were getting caught up and which parts of the UI were unclear. This was by far the best way to get real feedback. It also introduced us to people who really like and understand the genre of game that we made. So their feedback went a long way in helping us patch improvements as we went. Just like receiving all feedback, you do have to have some thick skin because your game is essentially on a stage being broadcast to a lot of people in kind of a raw state, but there's no better way to witness people's actual natural reaction to your game. The last tactic is to put your game in front of other game developers. These are people who are also walking the walk of making a game and understand the trudge and struggles that you've been through to get to this point. It's highly likely that an experienced game developer has been in your exact same shoes before. They may be able to help you fill in any gaps that you're not thinking about, and also teach you about technical baggage that you should know, like quirks about your game that you'll have to think through to get on Steam, missing features that you should definitely have before you launch that people will definitely ask you about, like localization. You'll be able to learn from all their past mistakes. If you're looking to find that kind of community of people, we happen to run a Discord server of other people making games. The link to that is in the description below. We'd love to see you there. And a reminder here that feedback is just feedback. You are still in creative control of your project. You're just opening yourself up to input from other people to help make your game better. If you disagree with what somebody tells you, it's okay. So for example, people wanted us to add multiplayer to Danger Crew. We thought about it and made a little prototype of it, and it was fun and cool, but it ultimately wasn't the game that we wanted to make. We really wanted to make a solo single player experience, and that's what we stuck to. You'll never please everybody, but do listen to people. Try to get a sense of where they're coming from. Ultimately, it's on you to make the final decision. Anyway, I hope you've gotten some value out of this. If you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. If you have your own cool tips for gathering feedback on game dev projects, be sure to leave those in the comments below. And once again, I'd love to see you come into our Discord server. Tell us about the game that you're working on. We have a great group of really helpful people in there that want to see you succeed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.